Let's have a look at making a 3D button in Swishmax. So I'm going to open up Swishmax and I'm just going to click on default for the moment. Let's click OK and let's just check the settings. So I go down here, I can click on the stage up here to movie properties and it's 960 by 600 and its frame rate is 30 frames per second. I will just leave that. So I'm going to click OK and if your panels don't look like this you can always go up to uh, window and down to default layout. I'm going to click it just to see what happens. Okay, it remains as it is and if you do that you'll get a window very similar to this. So let's start making the button. We go over here and we can choose this tool here, the ellipse tool and while I'm drawing it I'm going to hold my finger down on the shift key so that I get a perfect circle on the stage. So hold my finger on the shift key and then I'm going to draw the circle. Let's draw it nice and big and then I'm going to release the mouse then release my finger from the shift key. Now if I didn't do that I would get an oblong circle. That's the first circle done. Let's uh, change some of the properties on the circle. So let's go and choose this selection tool. Okay we have selected it here and if we go up here to its properties panel we don't want it to be, have a line around it so we can get rid of that and we can click none. Now let's go down to the fill color. Let's click on this one and then we want it to be a solid. Yes that's okay. I'm going to change the color to black. Okay so this is going to be the base. All I want to do for the second part is to copy this circle and to paste it again. So let's do edit copy object and then do edit paste object. Okay, I've got two circles now. Let's just move this one out here. And now let's reduce this one in size. So if I hold my finger down on the shift key again and move the mouse over one of the handles. So hold my finger on the shift key and I'm dragging the handle in so that the circle is reducing in size. I release my mouse and then the shift key and now I've got a smaller circle. Let's just change the properties on this. So if we go over here we can click on the stroke uh, style and it's set at none, that's fine. Let's go to the fill color and let's uh, change this. So we don't want solid this time. All we want is a gradient and in let's just change over here. So the gradient type, let's change that to uh, a radial gradient and that's how, it's look, how it would look if we left it but we want to change it. So let's uh, change the center of it to be a uh, bright red and maybe the outside of the circle to be a darker shade of red. So we're going to change, choose this one and now if I move that into here it's going to sit on top of the black circle. Now we can change that to 100% just to get a better idea of what it looks like see if it's centered and if you really want to see it on the big screen as it were you can go down here and hide panels and we can see if it's centered. I'm going to click outside here and back in again and then I'm going to move my arrow keys I'm just going to move it into position and that looks okay by my eye and if I go back up here to window and then uh, untick the hide panels so we get our panels back again let's uh, click on this little button down here fit stage on window and the next part to add the 3D dimensional look to it all I want to do is to grab hold of the ellipse tool again and this time I just want to draw a circle oblong so I'm not using the shift key so I'm going to do it like that and what I want to do is to go up here to my selection tool and just change some of the properties about it let's go up here instead of having a gradient we well, we do want a gradient but we want it to be uh, linear this time and on one side yes we want it to be this dark red but I, actually what we want to do is change the alpha the transparency the see-through ability of this and instead of being 100% uh, we want to change that to zero and this other one I'm going to change this color to a shade of grey and I should click on that little tag again and change that to about uh, 75 alpha. So for no see-through ability it's 100% and then you can reduce it down for a see-through effect.
What I want to do now is to change the shape of this oblong circle. Let's go up here to this, the sub-selection tool. And now I can go down here to this little handle, click on it and move it up. Okay, let's just move it to there. And what I can do now is to go back over here to the selection tool. I can move it down in here, but before I do that, I want to do something else. Let's go over here, click on this tool. This is the Fill Transform tool. And what I want to do is have this uh, shaded area of grey move up to the top part of it. And here is how you do that. You move your mouse to a corner handle and then move it slightly more until it comes into this shape. And then we can move this rotate operation round. And now the shadier area, the lighter grey area is at the top. If I move these in a bit closer and move this one down, I'm changing the shaded area. So I'm going to have nice and white, nice and grey at the top. So let's go back and change to our selection tool. And here's the image. If I now click, drag over here, and I may have to change the shape just a little bit in here. So let's uh, just bring it up a little bit like that. Maybe use the arrow keys to bring it down a little. And I've actually noticed that I've done it the wrong way around. So let's go back over here to our fill selection tool. And this time I want to move out here and drag it right round so that I've got the grey part at the top this time. Let's move this up a little. And now it's beginning to take shape. Let's just go back up here to so selection tool and move these over that up slightly. We can now bring it to 100% and have a look at how that's coming. Let's go back up here to Window. We can now have a look at Hide Panels and we can get a look at our button. And it's taken on a three-dimensional look about it. So let's go back up here to Window and back to Panels again. And what I want to do is just save this file because I'm going to use this button for future projects. So let's go up here to File, Save As. Okay, I've been making other buttons but I'm going to call it Switch and then click Save. 